Today, I'm taking a look at a new Pentax K5 Mark II. Now, this promises to be an exciting camera, and I've already been out with a camera taking a few pictures in this snow-filled woods, and it's actually producing some really remarkable shots. The 18 to 135 mm kit lens has a good range that will be sufficient for most photographic situations. The autofocus is very responsive, although at times it can hunt to find the ideal spot for focusing on. Exposure is handled well even in difficult lighting conditions. Here many cameras could be over influenced by the white snow, but the Pentax K5 produced a series of well exposed shots. The 16 megapixel capture size allows for tight cropping even on the smallest detail and yet still maintain a good sharpness in the image. So let's take a closer look at the camera and all the features it offers. Optically, this 18 to 135 mm lens has produced some really good results. A little bit of chromatic aberration on many of the shots, but that can easily be fixed in your image editing application. This shot was taken with the 18 to 135 mm lens, set at 21 mm. The central part of the image is OK, but if you look closely at the edge of the frame, you see the chromatic aberration. And this is the purple and green fringing that you can see on the edges of the trees. The camera does have a chromatic aberration filter, which can be selected from the menu. But chromatic aberration can also be easily fixed from within most image editing applications. There's a good zoom range on there. The lens is f3.5 at the full wide angle setting and it goes down to 5.6 at the 135 setting. At the 18mm setting, the focal length will be equivalent to a 27mm lens on a full frame DSLR. And this is a good focal length that gives you a moderate wide angle view without too much distortion. At the 135mm setting, the focal length is equivalent to a 202mm lens on a full frame camera. And this is good for picking out distant detail, yet is still manageable for handheld work. Optically it's superb, it has very smooth action on there and it's just about a half turn to get from fully wide to fully telephoto. There's also a manual focus option on here as well and this works reasonably well, although it's a little bit narrow. I prefer to have a, a larger focusing grip than the small one, but it does work quite well. The camera also has an excellent movie capture facility. It goes everything from full HD at 25 frames a second to HD 25 frames a second, VGA. There's a lot of options on there and it will record for up to 25 minutes in one go. Um, but on average, if you're shooting video, you shouldn't be shooting for more than a couple of minutes at any time. For video work, the focus is locked off. The camera doesn't autofocus whilst capture is in progress. Aperture can be preset, but you have no control on shutter speed. This is set by the camera. Generally, the shutter speed should match or be set to double the frame rate. The overall construction of the camera is very high. It feels very robust, solid. I'd feel quite comfortable about taking this camera in any of the extreme conditions, especially on a cold day to, like today, where many cameras may have given up. Pentax are renowned for building quality equipment, and this camera really lives up to that. It's a photographer's camera. So although the camera is very robust, there are a few niggly points that, about the camera. In fact, the menu system is very complicated. There's a lot going on in this camera. In fact, it gives you a lot of options, but when you're out in the field, maybe you don't need those options. Maybe it's something that you should be doing in your, on your computer, in your image editing application. But having said that, you do have the options. And we've got three metering modes here. We've got a full, fully automatic mode here. We've got a center weighted mode and a spot metering mode. Um, it's quite difficult to actually change the settings on it, which also has an advantage that you're not going to actually accidentally lock them. But on a cold day today, it's very difficult to find that sort of thing. And it's also not very, 
it doesn't click very easy into place there. So a couple of little fiddly points on there. The camera has many shooting modes program, shutter priority, aperture priority, manual, and it also has a movie setting as well. Many cameras would use a, a small hot button on the back of the camera to put in movie setting. Here there's no mistake, you put it into movie setting or your still mode setting. Um, there's also a bulb on this camera which leaves the shutter open so if you want to do those long time exposures put it on the bulb and the shutter will stay open for as long as you want it to be. The camera also has an X synchronization, flash synchronization, so you could use studio flash on this or portable flashes, and that's quite a handy feature. Plus also, of course, we have the usual pop-up flash, which is a nice even coverage, which is useful to be used as a fill-in light when on location. On the front here, there's a very simple on-off button dial here, very easy to operate, um, slightly difficult if you're wearing gloves, on the front there we can control our apertures, on the rear we can control our shutter speeds. So all in all the camera is very well laid out, very easy to use. All in all the controls are fairly nicely placed on the camera. You've got the rear wheel here which can control apertures or shutter speeds and the front control wheel there which will also do the same. At the rear of the camera we've got the autofocus settings. At the moment it's on the centre spot only. We can also by switching there we can put it onto selective so now I can control where I want the focus point to be by using the arrow keys there and also we've got a 5 or 11 point autofocus so it will automatically find that optimum focus point for you. Generally it works quite well. I, I prefer the centre selective um, spot where I can now define exactly where I want the focus to be and you can also assign that same focus spot to be the metering spot as well so if you're using spot metering you can say I want this spot metering to take a reading from where my focus point is. But as well the comprehensive menu system you can also press the info button for quick access to all the most popular used settings. For instance we've got the auto ISO settings here and if we use the front wheel we can set the minimum ISO and we're setting it here to 400 ISO and if we use the rear wheel we can set the maximum ISO and it will actually go to 12,800 ISO. Other options are highlight processing, file formats, JPEG also does digital negative as well and we can choose our JPEG quality I suggest you leaving it at the maximum setting of four stars and this will produce the biggest file so obviously you need a, a fairly large SD card. I've shot at each of the ISO values to see how usable this camera is by using the higher ISO settings. This is the master shot of Charing Cross Station. I'll be looking to see how much noise and how much usable detail there is under the bridge. At ISO 100 the image is as expected, very clean and this will be a great value to use on a bright sunny day. At ISO 200 there isn't a great deal of difference in noise and you could safely use this for most shooting scenarios and on bright but slightly overcast days. At ISO 400 the image is still very clean. This would be a good setting to use for dull overcast days or with flash. At ISO 800 we are starting to see a small amount of noise, but nothing unacceptable. The ISO will be well suited for capturing fast action. At ISO 1600, the camera is starting to show some noise. And this will be equivalent to seeing grain on a 400 ASA film. Photographers may like this, as it does give a film-like look. This ISO setting will be great for taking photographs of a live concert or stage production. At ISO 3200 the noise is now becoming very obvious. If you are after a gritty looking shot but still want to maintain image detail then this may be a good choice. At ISO 6400 the noise is breaking up a lot of the fine detail. Use this setting if you're into news or paparazzi style photography, but don't want to use a flash. At ISO 12800, the image is very soft, but has a dreamlike quality. 
I think this could be an ISO worth experimenting with for the creative-minded photographer. The Pentax K5 Mark II has many features and functions, including HDR in camera, raw file capture in both Pentax file format and DNG, and that's digital negative, image processing, color correction, etc, etc, etc. The camera can only accommodate a single SD card, which I feel is a limitation, especially if you want to capture both stills and video. Although I said the camera menu is complicated and there is a lot of options, if you want to find out more about the features, then there is a comprehensive 330-page well-illustrated instruction manual that you can wade through. Or simply go out and take pictures and find out what the camera can do whilst you're using it. At the end of the day, the cameras produce some remarkable results. I'm very pleased with it, and I think it deserves a very high appraisal from us.